Всем привет, дорогие друзья! С вами Дарья, ваша учительница русского языка. Today we continue speaking about the prepositional case, because if last time you thought that that was it about this case, no, not even close. So, let's begin. So, last time we spoke about the question где, where, and this is the first situation when we use the prepositional case. Где? В городе, in the city, на заводе, on the factory or at the factory, in the factory. Well, in Russian it's на заводе, and in Russia, в России. So, remember, the first question for prepositional case was the question где, where. I hope you remember the endings of the words. If you don't, quickly look through your table with the endings because we continue. And the second question when you use the prepositional case is о чем? О чем? Write it down, please. О чем? About what? О чем? Or about who? О ком? I want you to remember these questions. And always, always, when it comes to any case, pay attention to the question words, okay? It, it's just, it's crucial, it's essential to remember uh, the questions because it's not about the name of the case, it's not about the rules of the endings, it's about you answering the questions automatically without thinking what question it is or what, what, which case it is. So, always remember when you should use the ending in this or that form. So, your question I think I ruined my whiteboard. Question words are always here to help you. So, о чем? About what? About what? Or actually, I think you usually say, what about? What is it all about? And here it's who. Remember that we have inanimate objects and we have people and animals, animated objects. So, о чем, о ком. I guess you already understand that о means about. Or in English it's also of. To think of something, to remember of you maybe. So, in Russian it's о, 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 some Instagram, Instagram icon here eventually. So, uh, pay attention to the pronunciation. You remember the vowel reduction rules, right? So, here it sounds not like clear о, but like а, а. О ком. Repeat after me. О ком. О ком. About who? О чем. О чем. So, it's not о чем. Or chom, or you, you will sound like a, you know, hillbilly. A chom, o chom, o kum, a chom, a kum. So this is when you use the endings of the prepositional case. Now let's have a look at several examples. For example, a chom. I hope you are writing it with me. A chom dumayet. Do you remember this verb? Думать, to think. Думает. О чем думает? Президент. President. Президент. Oh, I'm running out of, out of space here. О чем думает президент? That's the ugly question mark here. О чем думает президент? That's the question. What is, oops, Mr. President thinking about? Or what does he think about? О чем думает президент? Here, pay attention, especially English speakers, that 
uh, you might know already, I told you, that the order of the words is not that important in Russian, but not when it comes to different prepositions. Here you can't put it randomly at the end, like what about, like what does he think about, not in Russian. In Russian, it always stays in front of the word, so about a student о студенте, о работе. So, you can say работе о. It, it doesn't jump anywhere, okay? So, it's always in front of the word. Okay, so what does president think about? О чем думает президент? Он думает... What's your guess? Думает о работе about his work о работе remember работа work job он думает о работе so the ending uh, the nominative case is работа работа prepositional ending is е о работе again vowel reduction о работе он думает о работе. Or он думает о политике. Mm -hmm. Политике. Он думает о политике. Or maybe, maybe he's thinking about his house. О доме. О доме. Or maybe he's been hungry and he thinks about food. О еде. О еде. He, he thinks about food. Президент думает о еде. They are humans too, so why not thinking about food? Okay, I hope you understand the general idea about this, this question, but now we have an interesting situation. Listen to me. If a word starts with a, o, u, e, or e, one of these letters, that's e, a, o, u, e, e, this preposition o turns to Ob, ob, ob. And it's simply because it's just easier to pronounce. O, A, O, 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 U, O, E. It's difficult. It's easy to say oba, obo, ob, simply because it's easier to articulate. So remember, if a word starts with one of these letters, you change O to ob. So let's have a look at the examples. So, the very same question, о чем думает президент, but this time we'll say that he is thinking maybe об Америке, about the USA, об Америке. Maybe it's American president, so he thinks about, or maybe it's a Russian president, русский президент думает об Америке. Sometimes he thinks about the USA more than he thinks about Russia, unfortunately. So, об Америке. Again, the same rule about the vowel reduction uh, can be applied here. Об Америке. It's not об Америке. Он думает об Америке. It's like one word here. It's not об Америке. No space here. It's like, woo, one thing. Об Америке. О чем думает президент? Об Америке. Президент думает об Америке. Он думает об Америке. Or maybe he wants to go on tour and thinks about some tour. Excursion. Excursion. Си-и. Об экскурсии. Об экскурсии. Он думает 
об экскурсии. Or maybe he is thinking about me, об учительнице. He is thinking about me, about a teacher, об учительнице. Pay attention to the ending. О чем думает президент? Об учительнице. But here, actually, I think we should switch to uh, the question о ком, about who. Oh, yeah, I think it's, it would be more natural. So, об учительнице. It starts with the у, so we put об here. Об учительнице. Or maybe he's thinking about maybe institute, like university. Об институте. Об институте. Институте. Mm -hmm. Об институте. Again, об институте. With E, it's especially interesting when it comes to pronunciation because it kind of turns to U. It's not об институте. No. Uh, again, because of its E, it's just easier to articulate. Об институте. Об ин, у, 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 you hear? Об институте. Repeat after me. Об институте. So, об Америке. One word. Об Америке. Об экскурсии. Об учительнице. Об институте. That's what Mr. President is thinking about. So, we already started speaking with о ком, when we mentioned the teacher. So, о ком, about who. So, when it's a person, an animal, uh, something you know that it's alive. О ком, about who. So, for example, о ком думает... Думает who? Кто? Думает... Думает... Let's just take Jack. О ком думает Джек? Джек. Джек. I promise, next time I will prepare in advance, because I always come here and I start improvising with all those examples, and it looks ridiculous at the end. But, okay, next time I'll try to prepare. So, о ком думает Джек? Джек is thinking about someone, so we need to understand about who. О ком думает Джек? Maybe let's practice with maybe names. Names. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, Marie. Why not? Ah, uh, Marie. He's in love with Mary, and he's thinking about her. Ah, uh, Marie. Jack думает о Марии. Or maybe he's a womanizer, and he also is thinking about uh, who. Je Jessica, maybe. Jessica. A Jessica. Double S here. A Jessica. A Jessica. Jack думает a Jessica. Also, maybe Jack has a wife. Pfft. Happens all the time. A жене. He's thinking about his wife, too. Of course, he's a good husband. А жене. After he thought about these two, he thinks about his wife. Джек думает о жене. Then, let's pick some uh, names starting with а, for example. So, we can change this preposition. Maybe he also thinks about Анна. Об Анне. Again, об Анне. Джек думает об Анне. It's very important when it comes to pronunciation. So, repeat after me. Об Анне. Джек думает об Анне. So, it's, you hear, it's like one word, об Анне. It's very important because otherwise you'll just sound like a foreigner. If you want to sound like a native speaker, prepare to practice it a lot. Okay, maybe... He also has a, a boyfriend all of a sudden. Interesting, interesting person, this Jack. 
So maybe he has a boyfriend too, and he's thinking about him. Ab Arture. Arture. By the way, in English, this name is Arthur. So you stress the first letter, Arthur. In Russian, it's Artur. Artur. So you would say Ab Arture. Jack думает об Артуре. У. Jack думает об Артуре. Mm -hmm. So, the principle is the same. The endings are just like common prepositional case endings from the previous lesson. And uh, yeah, it's just same with, with names too. Just remember to uh, change the preposition from O to OB when it comes to A, O, U, E and E. So now let's recall several verbs, the most common verbs about it. So we already know думать, думать, to think. I'm not sure, do you think I need to write the translation? Думать. Okay, I will just do, because I'm sure at least one person there needs it. To think, думать, uh, помнить, to remember. With some of these verbs, you will have to be careful in the future because sometimes they demand another case. But right now, you don't need uh, you don't need this confusion. So we just stay with uh, these verbs plus or. Okay. So помнить to remember. To remember. To remember. So to remember about some something. Yes? Okay. Говорить. To speak. Говорить. Of course, when it comes to speaking about something. Yes? Yeah? Speaking about of some of something. To speak. To speak. Говорить. To, to speak. Also, to dream. Мечтать, мечтать, мечтать. To dream about something. Be careful, by the way, uh, when it comes to the verb to, uh, to dream in English, it also has the meaning uh, when you're sleeping and you're having some dream and you're dreaming about something. Like, I was dreaming about you last night. Not in Russian. In Russian, those will be two different words, okay? So here it only me means to have some dream, yeah, in, in, in reality, not, not while sleeping, like Martin Luther, Luther King, like I have a dream. Uh, so he dreams on мечтает. So don't confuse this because uh, English speakers do it all the time. Мечтать, to have a dream, to dream. And uh, писать, maybe to write about something. Писать. 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 To write. So with all these, oops, to write. Писать. Писать, мечтать, говорить, помнить, думать. And with all these verbs, you can use the prepositional case with о. Preposition о. Думать о. Помнить о, говорить о, мечтать о, писать о. So when it's about something, you can use any of these verbs. So uh, let's maybe uh, write down some examples. Number one, another dialogue. Ты помнишь? Uh, about what? Uh, ты помнишь? Don't forget about the soft sign. Ты помнишь об экзамене? About the exam. Об экзамене. Экзамене. Не. Here is е yeah in the end. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm always afraid because in the previous video I was... <laughs> 
I was like that talking from somewhere here so this time I'm trying to uh, get really close to here and yeah that's that's the result of it so do you remember about the exam ты помнишь об экзамене you see it starts with э so we uh, we use об ты помнишь об экзамене repeat after me ты помнишь об экзамене again об экзамене об экзамене like one word ты помнишь об экзамене do you remember about the exam and uh, guess what oops uh, нет не помню i don't i don't remember in russian just like in english you can give the short answers it will sound unnatural if you start answering with the full sentence нет я не помню об экзамене it will sound like in a theater you know some classical play in russian you would say uh, just usually нет that's it or just не помню it's like in english no i don't я не помню нет не помню the full sentence of course will be нет я не помню об экзамене mm -hmm. uh, what else maybe о чем ты мечтаешь no ты we already took о чем она мечтает о чем она мечтает what does she dream about? Мечтает. Мечтает. What does she dream about? О чем она? She. О чем она мечтает? Она мечтает о еде. Она мечтает о еде. She wants to eat. Мечтает о еде. In Russia we have a punk rock song проклятый старый дом cursed old house and there is the line for many many years i've been dreaming only about food я как же там я очень много много лет мечтаю только о еде do, do, do. I, I love this. It's Karoli Shut, Karoli Shut band. So if you are interested in Russian music, check out those guys. They are incredible. Uh, the main guy died several years ago, unfortunately, but yeah, the old songs were good. So она мечтает о еде. Uh, maybe about pizza. A pizza. She wants some hot pizza. A pizza. Она, maybe she's hungry sitting in some exam and she's only thinking about pizza. Она мечтает о пицце. She's dreaming about this pizza. Uh, what else? Let's, let's get rid of this. Then maybe о чем? О чем он говорит? What is he talking about? О чем он говорит? О чем он говорит? What is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Maybe some professor is mumbling about something there. Well, what's he talking about? О чем он говорит? And you can say, I have no idea. О чем он говорит? But okay, maybe. By the way, let's write it down. It's so, so cool. How to say I have no idea in Russian? It's понятие. Понятия не имею. So it's a little bit of slang for you. Понятия не имею. Понятия не имею. So if you want to impress one of your Russian friends when they ask you something, instead of saying I don't know, не знаю, you can answer понятия не имею. I have no idea. Okay? Понятия не имею. Mm. And then maybe, and what is she talking about а о чем о чем она говорит она говорит о чем она говорит um, о погоде maybe about the weather о погоде some small talk 
о погоде. And by the way, remember that we are not in Great Britain here. In Russian, small talk, like, oh, the weather is really nice today, хорошая погода. It doesn't, doesn't, that, uh, ha doesn't happen that often in Russia. When I start something like this with my neighbors, they're just uh, like looking around in the elevator, <laughs> thinking that I'm kind of weird. Yeah, so, okay, о погоде. О чем она говорит? Она говорит о погоде. Okay, what else? Помнить. I think we mentioned uh, the verb помнить to remember. Oh, I think we already practiced with it, right? So, помнить uh, об экзамене. Do you remember about the exam? Yes, we, we already took it. So, how about писать? To write. Писать. Писать. О чем пишет... О чем пишет... Э, пишет... Кавка. 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 I think I should have taken some Russian writer. So maybe we'll replace it. Our one and only friends. Let's replace him with Pushkin. Pushkin. Mm -hmm. Pushkin. Let's leave Kafka for some more depressing, more depressing lesson. So Pushkin. Pushkin is writing about love. A любви. A любви. He writes about love. О любви. Пушкин пишет о любви. Pay attention that sometimes you will drop the vowel. Because in nominative case, love is любовь. But here, whoops, the O is gone. Don't ask me why. Just remember. О любви. Again, vowel reduction. О любви. Of course, everybody writes about love. Everybody wants love. And о чем пишет? Maybe Толстой. Actually, he writes about love too. О чем пишет Толстой? Пишет Толстой. Толстой. Hmm. Let's say about life. О жизни. Life. Like war and peace. О жизни. War and peace. О жизни. Or maybe about war. Why not? О войне. О войне. О войне. Ugh. My writing is getting getting worse. О войне. Толстой пишет о войне. А Пушкин пишет о любви. Of course, it's just an example and they both wrote many, many different things. But that's what we need to practice with the verb писать. Okay, now let's practice some speaking as usual. And today we speak about... Guess who? Who it is? You'll never guess. You'll never guess. Because this is Mr. Froda. Froda Beggins. Froda. I don't remember any special special feature. Some something about him. So well, okay, he has the ring. That's his special thing. This is Froda. Froda begins. By the way, do you want an absolutely unnecessary but fun fact about this stuff? There are three. I'm just reading uh, The Lord of the Rings for the third or for the fourth time in my life. I love it absolutely. So, uh, interesting fact. There are three major translations of uh, The Lord of the Rings in Russian and the name of uh, the Beggins family. In, for example, in my translation, it's Torbins. Torbins. 
This is translation made by Muravyov, famous, famous guy. Uh, so he calls them Torbins, Bilba Torbins, Frode Torbins, because the bag, obviously, uh, baggings, like carrying a bag, bag, mm -hmm, bag. Uh, there is a word in Russian, Torba, Torba, Torba. It's kind of a backpack, old, old word. Nobody sp speaks like that anymore. So it's Torbins. And uh, the second translation of their last name is Sumkins. If you already know the word Sumka, the bag, like ladies bag, Sumka, Sumka. So they translated uh, baggings as Sumkins. Sumkins. It's just ridiculous. My husband loves this translation and I'm the fan of this translation. So uh, when we have a couple of, uh, you know, wine glasses, always ends with the argument which translation is better. So, and the third one is just begins, like here, just literal translation. So, if you want to impress some of your Tolkienist Russian friends, you can mention this absolutely unnecessary for you detail, <laughs> but I, I love this, I love this stuff. So, okay, sorry, just a little bit distraction here. So, Froda. Froda, okay. Froda, uh, кто это? Конечно, это Фродо. Это Фродо. О чем он думает? Mm? О чем он думает? Guess. What is he thinking about? О чем он думает? Он думает о кольце. Кольцо. The ring in Russian is кольцо. Кольцо. The ring, the the ring, like here, the ring, кольцо. So, uh, он думает о кольце, о кольце. Well, actually, no. Он думает не о кольце. Here, pay attention that you can add не to кольцо. Не о кольце. Uh, here it's all about the meaning, what you want to emphasize. Uh, if you want to emphasize that he's thinking not about the ring, but about something else. Не о кольце, а о чем-нибудь другом. About something else. Не о кольце, а... I don't know. О Сэме. About Sam, he, he thinks. Or you can say... Фродо не думает о кольце. He's not thinking about the ring. Не думает. Mm -hmm. So, не о кольце, not about the ring, и не думает. He is not thinking about it. So, maybe he's not thinking, he's speaking about it. Он не думает о кольце, он говорит о кольце. Okay. So, well, actually, he's not thinking about the ring. Он думает не о кольце. Он думает о... о... Guess? О ком думает Фродо? Фрода думает о коте. It's always a good idea to think about your cat, especially somewhere in the depth of Mordor, right? О коте. Он думает о коте. А о чем думает кот? О чем думает кот? Кот думает. Oh, he's a happy cat. So probably he's thinking. Hmm. I don't know. What what can a cat be thinking about? Let's say uh, a malaki. 
how to draw a milk pack, milk pack, I don't know, amalake, about milk, amalake, mm -hmm. milk, so maybe some cow is here, cow, malake. oh my goodness, okay, кот думает о молоке, а Фродо думает о коте. And uh, what else? Фродо пишет. He's writing a book. And he is writing about his uh, friend. Пишет. Let's get rid of this one. Фродо. Фродо пишет. He's writing a book, maybe, and in that book, oh, by the way, by the way, here we can combine the location, prepositional case, uh, and about. So, Фродо пишет в книге, in his book, Фродо, oh my god, some here, Фродо, Пишет, пишет в книге. Remember the previous lesson. В книге. In the book. Фрода пишет в книге о друге. About a friend. О друге. And we know the name. His name is Sam, obviously. О друге Сэмми. Same, yeah. it's prepositional ending, so we just add yeah. Фрода пишет в книге о друге Сэмми. So, both situations we have the prepositional case. Okay, then. Кто пишет в книге о Сэмми? Кто? Фрода, конечно. Фрода пишет в книге. Фрода пишет в тетради. In the notebook. В тетради, let's write it, в тетради, нет, конечно, нет, он пишет в книге. В тетради? Нет, он пишет в книге. А Фрода читает о Сэме, он о нем читает. Is he reading about him? Нет, он не читает, он пишет. Фрода пишет о Сэме. О ком он пишет? О ком? Он пишет о Сэме. А Сэм это кто? Кто Сэм? Сэм это его друг. Сэм это его друг. Окей. Okay. Now what else? Фрода пишет о враге, enemy, враг, о враге, maybe he's writing about Sauron, о враге, нет, он пишет о друге Сэмми, Фрода пишет в книге о друге Сэмми. And finally, before we end, let's get through the personal pronouns. Mm -hmm. Do you remember them? Она, оно, вы, right? Мы, мы, они. I hope you can see this one too, but I, I'm not sure. So, prepositional case for this. These again, you already learned o and ob. Also, we have obo. Don't freak out, don't freak out. Just remember this one aba mne about me. Okay, aba mne. That's it. Aba mne. Mm -hmm. Ты о тебе. О тебе. About you. Mm -hmm. On. About him. 
is о нем. О нем. About her. О ней. Ней. О ней. Again, remember the vowel reduction. О ней. О нем. О тебе. Обо мне. Оба. Окей? Okay? Обо мне. Оно. Same here. О нем. These two always, not always, but often go together. Вы, о вас, о вас. Мы, о нас, нас, о нас. And они, о них. Let me write it somewhere, somewhere here. Они, they, о них. О них. Mm -hmm. So, like that. О них. Oh, and since it's been a while for today's lesson already, so it's up to you to practice. Just write it down and make some examples, make sentences. For example, if you have a Russian boyfriend or a girlfriend, you can say, I'm thinking about you. Я думаю о тебе. Or, I remember about you. Я Помню о тебе. Or maybe I'm thinking about him. Я думаю о нем. Or about her, о ней. So, it's up to you. So, my job is done for today. I just gave you uh, the major information about how to say this construction about something or someone. So, let's summarize quickly the prepositional case. First, it answers the question где, where, mm -hmm. where. Oh, I should do it more quickly. Где, где, where, and here you can say в, на, so in something, on something, on the roof, на крыше, on the table, на столе, or in the house, в доме. So, the first situation. The second situation, о чем and о ком. О ком. About who or about what. And here, two prepositions. As for the endings, as for the endings, just practice, practice. You won't be able to master them if you don't make as many examples and if you don't use them out loud. That's the most important part. No matter how many times you write it down, it doesn't matter. It only matters if you can actually use it in your real life in a conversation. So, writing will not help you if you still can't can speak so speak speak and uh, i encourage you to practice uh, in uh, your how to say it in your apartment or wherever you are you just look around you look at all the objects in the room so you can say that телефон на столе the phone is on the table, or the pen is in my hand, ручка в руке, or just anything, something is on the wall, картина на стене, я в комнате. So, and when you go on the street, when you, just everywhere, when you look around, try to remember at least something at least some small random uh, constructions. The more you practice, the better. So I guess that's it for today. Yeah, I got rid of everything. So thank you very much for staying with me. If you know someone who might be interested in Russia or learning Russian, let them know about my channel. I'll be very happy to see some new students among you, my lovely students. What, what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.